Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm here with week two of my Advent series for 2021, which I'm making bookmarks. You could turn these into Bible journaling pages quite easily. And the printout is linked in the doobly-doo down below. It's got hearts on it, and they're printed in a very pale kind of gray color so that you don't end up with really big black lines around anything because I wanted this to be very seamless from top to bottom, but just have a lot of beautiful color underneath of some white pen work we're going to add at the end, which you want to make sure you stay tuned for. So I'm starting with yellow because yellow is my favorite color in the color wheel. And then I'm going to be adding colors that are around yellow. I'm going to try to go around the color wheel as best I can. And I've picked out a selection of colors so that I'm kind of ready for that. You might even want to get your pencils in order and then you don't have to think about the color wheel once you get your pencils in order. You just grab the next one in the line. So on either side of yellow is a yellow orange and a yellow green. So I need to make sure that I'm picking those two colors to touch to the, the yellow itself. And then sometimes for the color where they meet, Sometimes it'll get darker, sometimes it'll be lighter, but generally it's going to be something in between the two. And you could layer those two colors over top of each other to mix a color that's going to look like the transition color, or you can just pick something that's close, which is kind of what I did. Some of my colors end up having a shadow on one side. I tried to give them a little dimension, that sort of thing. And some of them don't, and that's okay. The whole effect is what I'm looking for in the long run. This entire thing took me about 45 minutes to color, just so you know, it can be time consuming. And if you choose to, you can use Gamsol or baby oil or some kind of blending solution with it, but just be aware that you've got a lot of colors, a lot of transitions. So make sure that you don't drag one color into another and contaminate them and that sort of thing. So it can be hard to keep them all very separate, but with light pressure and a pencil, it's somewhat easy to control. The pencil points that are on these pencils, these are my polychromos and they're sharpened with my AFMAT pencil sharpener. If you want more information on that, it's in video number one. So it's the previous video to this one where I talk about that pencil sharpener and the pros and cons of it. But one of the pros is that it makes me work in layers because I don't want to use a lot of pressure on these pencils. I haven't had them break with these nice long points, but I tend to use lighter pressure just because it's in my mind that I don't want them to end up breaking. As I move up and down, I'm going to continue to move around the color wheel. So since I'm in the green and blue area, the next heart, even on the left, even though it's not touching, is going to have some greens and blues in it and, you know, more yellowish at the top, that kind of thing. And I'm just layering colors until it makes my eye pleased as it moves up and down the page in whatever direction it's going. You could also do this whole thing in, you know, two or three colors. Just pick your favorites. If you want this whole thing to be all pinks, then do it in all pinks. Just do it in darks and lights and that sort of thing. So you get some differentiation between the colors of each one of them. It doesn't have to be all, um, all the same so that you can see those shapes. But getting down here now into the blues, and the bluish purples, and then into the reddish purple. So just keep moving around that color wheel and your colors will work better together. If you just pick random colors on one side and another of the color wheel, it may be very colorful and have a cacophony kind of a look to it, but there might be some times when you wanna have something that feels a little more coherent and following the color wheel does tend to help that, so keeping a color wheel on hand, print it out, decide where you work can often be some good color inspiration to get you going. Um, as I move up on the top section, I moved from the yellows and the oranges into pinks and reds, and then the reds turn into red purples. So there's red violets and there's blue violets and helps to, in your mind, be able to classify which ones are more red violets, which ones have more pink in them versus which ones like this one has more blue type of color in it because they'll, they'll each have a different flavor to them. And some of them are hard to tell. Like it's hard to tell whether one's a cool purple or a warm purple, but the warmer ones tend to be on the redder side and the cooler ones tend to be on the bluer side 
You technically don't need to know in order to use colors, whether they're warm or cool, but sometimes you'll see a tutorial and it says use a cool purple and you don't know what that means because they don't give you a color number or something. So for the remainder of this, you could leave it all white, but for the technique that I'm going to be using, adding some white pen work to it, I need to have color everywhere so that something shows up. If you were to use the white pen on top of this with a continuous pattern like I want to do, you wouldn't be able to see it when it hits the white area. So I want to make sure you can see it. I'm using the same colors that are in each of those sections. So it's giving the whole thing a softer look, but I have to adjust which colors I'm using. Am I going to use a darker than the heart color or am I going to use a lighter than the heart color or am I going to push it a little more toward the warm or to to the cool based on what kind of color is right next to it. But for the most part, really what I'm looking for is that overall color flow from one end to the other so that I have all of these beautiful colors working together that are going to underlay the white pen work at the end. And you could certainly stop at any point on this. You don't have to go all the way to the last steps that I'm going to create with because I'm crazy that way. <laughs> I like to spend some time and add a lot of layers, a lot of colors, and a lot of details into my work because that's how I roll. And especially since I'm giving my bookmarks as gifts, I thought it would be especially nice to spend some extra time with them. Now for the line work. I'm using a Uniball Signo white gel pen. You can use whatever white gel pen works for you. Know that you're drawing on top of waxy pencil and waxy pencil is going to make your lines a little more uneven. So be prepared for that. I was just being loose with my lines. I didn't worry about everything being perfect. So I was happy with these lines. It kind of broke up a little bit. The ruler that I'm using is an old sailing ruler that I bought decades and decades ago, but you can get a really simple type of rolling ruler at, uh, you know, art supply stores, craft stores, office supply stores, different kinds of places. I'll put a link to one in the doobly-doo. To make my two angles match, the left and right angles of these, I drew a horizontal line through where the first line goes through physically through the verticals. So you can see two horizontal lines there. That's where they crisscrossed. And then I made one line for the new angle, for this angle that I'm doing right now, and made sure that it crisscrossed in approximately that same place. So that gives me both of them at the same angle. You could try to do a 90 degrees type of angle and then make sure that you get it at exa placed exactly at 45 degrees from the vertical so that it all lines up and looks normal. But I decided it would be easier to do it this way. So there you go. When I finished, I just added a dot into the crisscross place where those lines met. My final step was to mount it onto some black cardstock and then slip it into a protective sleeve so I don't have to worry about the pencil smushing or coming off on the book when my recipient gets their bookmark. If you would like to be part of a fundraiser that I'm doing right now for hunger, there's a Hunger for Hope class, and this video is part of it. The whole series is available to you right now. You can watch all four videos right now without waiting for the next Sundays to come by signing up for that class. It's $10, and the entire $10 goes to charity to help hungry people who need to eat. And Jesus calls us to be his hands and his feet, and we are his hands when we make artwork, but we are his feet when we put his word into action. So I encourage you to sign up for that class. If you signed up for it last year and you want to sign up again, so you get another $10 into the kitty so that we can give more to charity, feel free to do that. And I will see you guys again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.